They say the hardest choices require the strongest wills. Just now, I had to make a choice whether or not I wanted to go to the Barnes & Noble and have a good time, or sit here and talk about this new show that I just watched, and I... I'm too weak. I had to do it while it was still fresh in my mind, because if I were to do this later, it wouldn't do it justice. My mind wouldn't be in the same headset as it is right now. The 100 girlfriends who really, 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 really love you is a show that exists. The show exists because animators brought it to life and there's nothing that we as an anime community can do to stop it. Here, I'll show you. Please don't hurt me. The show is called Kimi no Koto da Dai 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 Suki na 100 ni no Kanojo. Or, in English, the 100 girlfriends who really, 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 really love you. And, oh my, holy, holy wish fulfillment, Batman. It's a, it's a show that's exactly what it's, it's a wish fulfillment show. That goes overboard. I don't know how else to put it. So let me hit you with the one thing that I like about the show so far. The voice acting is good. The Japanese voice actors, because they don't have English ones yet, that'll be decided soon, I'm sure. But the Japanese voice actors do a good job going ham, giving energy to the characters, and delivering some of the most ridiculous lines. I will also say this, and this isn't really a compliment, but this, this show certainly has balls for existing, because I'm sure that a board of directors must have looked at this and went, Maybe this is a little iffy, because it's a show that, without a doubt, glorifies polygamy, or Mormonism, or whatever, and says, yeah, let's go about it. But we're not just going to do it once. We're going to do it 100 times. So, yeah, the show's got nards, but that's enough compliments. Now on to the stuff that I didn't like about the show. And the first and foremost is that it's not too funny, or at least I didn't find it funny. It's a show that relies a lot on random-esque humor that just stuff that has nothing to do with the moment and just comes out of nowhere uh also lots of fourth wall breaks and self-referential humor watching the show is still just very much an enigma i felt like i was while watching it i felt like i was constantly in the birthing position just whenever they tried to tell a joke this show didn't make me laugh now granted it's episode one it still has 12 episodes to try something with me and i'll be honest with you I don't even know if I want to keep my finger on this pulse anymore. I didn't like this one, but for some reason, I'm getting drawn in to see it. Maybe it's hate watching. Maybe I hate myself. I couldn't tell you. you know, another thing that hurts me about this show, the animation. I need to see who animated this. So Bilberry Animation Studios is the studio that did this. Oh my god, they did... No! No! <laughs> oh my god. I just looked up the animation studio for 100 Girlfriends, and it turns out they are the same studio that did QQ. These guys did Q2, QQ Season 2. Oh, no... No. Stop leaking into my personal life. So, yeah, the animation of the show is clanky, it's junky, and it's nothing really to... It's 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 something you can... It's not something to sneeze at. It's something for you to blow a like, honk a lookie at. But maybe give them some time to work it out. Maybe it'll be... Maybe it'll become the most brilliant thing I've ever seen. I, maybe I'm just judging it too quickly. And then there's the plot, which I'm going to spoil up to episode one. So if any of you want to see this for all that it's worth and don't want it spoiled, shoot, get out of here. So what happens in this one is the main boy has terrible luck, like uh, worse than Ikaku from Bleach, from what I can gather. He asks out a hundred girls and gets rejected a hundred times, the poor fella. Such tragic pain it makes for a pretty good villain villain origin story if i've ever seen one so he goes to a shrine he prays to god saying please when i enter high school give give me a girl i'll be real with the chief so long as she's got a pulse she's fine 
God comes to him and says, buddy, I feel you. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm not just going to give you one soulmate. I'm going to give you all the soulmates. Your luck's about to change, boyo, because my word, the amount of chocolates you're getting on Valentine's Day, it's, it's going to be nothing but diabetes in your blood, son. 100 girlfriends I bestow upon you in your high school life. So he's really excited about it. Joy, can't wait to see how it goes. So he goes in, first day of school, he meets the, the, our two first girls here. Upon meeting the two girls, he falls in love with them, and the girls fall for him because he fucking, I don't know, because he was nice, I guess, because he, he breathed in their general direction. So anyway, Protagonist Kun needs to, uh, I've already forgotten his name. Protagonist needs to decide between girl A and girl B. It goes back to God and says, wow, it's a really hard decision, why did you force this upon me? So God, is, uh, kicking him while he's down, imparts him a bit of wisdom, or it gives him a few, it gives him a nugget of wisdom. He has to choose what girl he wants to date, and the one that he doesn't choose will die. Now, granted, God wasn't specific here. Maybe the plot twist was he can choose whatever girl he wants and the other girl has to die, but she doesn't die for like another 60 years. We, we're all living flesh and blood, I feel. We all die at some point. Even Naruto died at one point and we had to replace him with Boruto. So Captain Cop Out comes up with the brilliant scheme to date both girls at the same time. So he spends all night looking for a special flower that was talked about earlier in the episode and finds two of them, gives them to both girls at the same time and goes, please go out with me. And it fucking works. <laughs> we are beyond a level of wish fulfillment here. Now, maybe it's a cultural shock. Maybe it's, maybe I'm behind the times here. So all's well that ends well. The girls are really happy with it and they're okay with it. And so the guy now has two, uh, two Pokemon to put in his PC box. But the episode doesn't stop there. It finishes with a uh, tidbit that this boy still has 98 girls to go. Will he date all of them or will he leave them to die? I mean, who could say, honestly? It's, it's, I haven't read the manga, so I don't know how far that he's gone or how far he's, he's willing to go before the stress finally gets to him. But if I were in his shoes, I don't think I'd be able to take any more than eight. Because that's one for every day of the week, plus one for leap year. So are we just going to longingly stare into each other's eyes? I'm pretty unleap here if you want to go out. If I'm being honest, I don't think that they're actually going to pair this kid with 100 girls. At least, they're probably not going to show all 100 girls on screen. That's just too much. The only anime slash manga that I've been able to see that possibly working, where they're able to showcase 100 girls and have have let them have their moment with the MC, is Monster Musume. If you've read the manga, you know what I'm referring to. And if you haven't, then, well, you at least know by the show. They're able to pair him off with, uh, <laughs> I want to say up to 14 different romantic interests. It's crazy, but somehow the author knows knows how to write a harem. Monster Musume isn't the show I'm trying to talk about here. The point is, I'll still watch this one. Maybe it entertains me at one point. If any of you have any idea how many girlfriends you can take, let me know in the comments below and tell me how you'd be able to take care of them. But anyway, that's all I got for you, so... Sayonara, suckers. It's not like I hate you or anything. It's just you're a really bad show. I like that.